Let's get to know young glyph artist Frank Zinn. Internationally known Belizean ambassador of the Maya. All right, so as, all, as we all know, the cast war occurred in 1842, and that brings me to when San Antonio was established. So in 1842, during the cast war, the Maya started running down. They started to go down from Mexico to Belize. So they got to this part, specifically San Antonio, in 1876. So now we got to San Antonio, they were right at the center, and they were like, oh, there are three big mounds right in the center of San Antonio. And they were like, and they knew it was from their ancestors, right? So they, they said, why not call it Place of the Three Hills? So that is why they gave it the name Osh Mul Kah, which Osh is for number three, Mul is for mounds, and Kah is place of. So the original name of San Antonio, given in 1876, was Osh Mul Kah, Place of the Three Hills. And San Antonio is known for farming. <coughs> A lot of people in San Antonio, they do a lot of farming, a lot of peanuts, beans, corn. So the, the, the things that they would plant are things that have been planted way back in time. So the tradition of farming is still continued, slash and burn, where they would burn the trees, you know, and, and then the same ashes would, ashes would be used for as fertilizers for the trees. So same tradition, so it's continuing, still some people practice that. and. Uh, so that is it. So I want to say some words in Maya. I want to say the Pledge of Belize in Maya. It says, Belize in much kahal, ten Belize. Belize in laktsil, in kambalna, in kulna, in kahal. Ten walabol Belize. Walabol in tatao betel in ahkam besao. Walabol il behla, behla yete sama. Kushanin, king kambal ma cheting utsili. Baale, utyal shanin kitkob, yetelin sukuno. Tenu ala bol belise. Kin tzatantikin meat belise. Tulaka yung wol, hebishkin pastale. Ya odios botik. So let's explore some of Frank's creations while listening to him play the guitar. Alright, so we have the introductory phrase, which is very common in the Maya writing and in Maya art, you know, like uh, especially on bases. Uh, so they would be like, and then it happened. Here is race, here is health. So these are introductory phrases that we we'll find in sentences and like where the sentence would start in Maya art. So here we have alai, abai. So here is raised. So very common, alai, abai, here is raised. You keep the drinking vessel off. So here is raised the drinking vessel off, which is very common in the Maya I'm writing. And then we'll have the name of the person, which the drinking vessel is of. And then it would continue with other sentences. But here we have the introductory phrase. Here is raised the drinking vessel of. You keep.
Here is a nice coffee mug and the coffee mug Frank made for me. Can you see the cup from there? All right, so here we have the name Jaime. So the way I decided to do this is by the sound of Jaime, right? So if you take a look here, we have the letters, I would say, for the name. This is the glyph for Ha. J A. This is the representation of the moon. Take a look here. This bracket sign is for the moon. Ha. So after Ha, we go from top to bottom. So this is the way the Mayas would write. From top to bottom, left to right. So we go from top to bottom. So Ha, at the bottom we have the Yi, Y, I. Ha, Yi. And here we have the me glyph. Ha, ye, me. And in the writing system, you know, like the last vowel will always be omitted. So in this case, we need to add an extra e. Omit the e and then keep the e from the me. So ha, ye, me. And then the extra e is right here with the three dots. So ha, ye, me. That is something that the Mayas like to do, you know, when like space wise. So they would merge glyphs together uh, or they could fit it inside of another glyph. So ha yi me extra e take that e off from the writing and then we have hai me hai me and if we turn the cup around we would have the balam glyph and this is actually the hish glyph the hish this is the ocelot so if you take a look, so the jaguar, the puma, and the ocelot, they would have the same features almost. If you take a look here, the feature for their spots, the ear, the, the teeth, and something that would change from the, the, the cats, the wild cats, is their little eye. If you take a look at the eye, it has the eye of, a, of the hish. If it would have had like a squared eye with, with the little bracket inside, that would be a jaguar. So all of them change because of their little eye. So to know three of them, look at the eye. This has the eye of a little ocelot, with this, which is the hish. So we have a hish here, which is Jim. And then the little hish glyph, Jaime. Frank created a beautiful replica of the famous Komkom vase and blasted onto the scene as part of the PBS special Ancient Maya Metropolis. My name is Frank Sib. I am from the beautiful village of Oshmulka in Belize. I am a Yucatec Maya speaking um, Maya. I grew up um, learning about our culture. I grew up um, practicing many of the traditions that our culture has. That is where I learned how to read glyphs. It's something very special to us, the Maya. I started painting on pottery. But this is what I do now. Discovered in 2015 during excavations of a rich terminal classic deposit at the site of Baking Pod in Belize, the Komkom vase was instantly recognized as a unique and important find. I gifted this excellent book 
to Frank at the end of our stay together. Frank also works in wood and has some paintings on canvas. But besides Maya hieroglyphs, Frank loves to carve slate. All right, so this is one of my first carvings that I did. Uh, so when I was starting to learn epigraphy, you know, and I was getting into more like in a little of the carving art, so I decided to do like a piece of slate for the first time. So this I made in 2010. The story says it itself. So it starts with the left corner, Iut, which means, and then it happened. And then we have introductory glyph. So we have 5, 10, 15, 16, baktuns, katuns, tuns, winas, kins, and then the dates for the calendars. So Iwut, so this date is December 10th, 2010. And the glyphs on the right, we have Tiba, which is Tib, Laktila, family, Talu, Kushta, came to live, Waye, here. So, and then it happened on December 10, 2010, that the Sib family came to live here. So this is to commemorate, like when we came to live around like this, came to live in our house so i decided to do a monument this is basically so that we would commemorate the day we came to live here like mayas would do in ancient times right yeah. so we're like my maya why not do it myself now <laughs> <laughs> very nice yeah i'm not sure who who they are but it's just a replica which i'm still working on if you see like i still have to lower these edges here fix on the drawings so still working on this one and if you take a look at this this is lady shock so lady shock from yes Chilan, and she's like a, making a sacrifice here so she's perforating her tongue and pulling a rope through her tongue which has thorns in it so here the blood would go down the rope into the plate of papers and the blood would go down in the papers and then they would burn it and then a figure would appear here like uh, this snake uh, vision they call it so it would appear here by her like conducting the the ritual okay so this is a a carving which was found at Tikal in a piece of bone. So here we have the paddler gods on the sides and we have the corn god in the center. And if we take a look at the animals that are surrounding, an opossum, a parrot, this is a monkey and an iguana. So they all have their hand on their forehead or on their eyes, which is representing that they are crying. So they are crying, even the god is crying. So it is saying that they, he died and the paddler gods, they're taking him through the route, uh, through the, like on, on the water. So basically that is what it's showing. There's more behind it. But. I picked Frank up in his hometown of Oshmulka and he stayed with me for five days in this quaint little cottage. The first Maya site we visited was El Pilar on the border between Belize and Guatemala. Reserve 20 square kilometers that we are surveying. 
Um, this is a, a view of the survey up until um, up through 2019. There was a big gap, which we call the COVID quiet. Oh. And um, so we came down this year, and all of this area that was that is grayed out, we surveyed that, and then everything from um, this part north we surveyed. So we're, well. we're we're accomplishing our goal of completing it. the 20 square kilometers of LP Bar. The next day, we headed to Zanantanich, where you cross the Mopan River and a hand-cranked ferry. We hooked up with Jaime Awe, former director of Belize Archaeology, to view the 2022 excavations at Zinantinich. Three kilometers outside of Frank's village is the ancient site of Pakbi Tun, where we saw their 2022 excavations. Uh, I'm Sheldon Skaggs from Bronx Community College mm -hmm. in City University of New York. Uh, welcome to the site of Pakbi Tun. Uh, Terry Powis from Kennesaw State University is the permit holder for this site and Guacamayo. Uh, I am the field director and I will be guiding you through the tour today. We visited with friend Carla Juan, and Frank's parents joined us. Another day, Jaime Awe invited us to a personal tour of Baking Pot, where they discovered the famous Komkom vase. And there you can see, it's a pretty good preservation. Wall. Yes, in okay, fact, so. in fact, yeah. So there you can see. Right, and this image here, this is, um, that stair side is that one right there. And this terrace wall <clears throat> is that terrace right there. And you can see some of the deposits that we started to come across. And then, in fact, if you, it might show better if you come here in the shade. Um, you won't have that kind of reflection. Yeah. So, so if you look here, right? That's the stair side right to my right. This is the terrace wall that I have my hand on. And so we started to hit those deposits about here. And we started to take it down, you know, slowly. And then we gradually run into, we start to, we come across this burial. Hmm. Um, that was almost at floor level. Floor meaning where we're standing. And it was in some of these deposits that I was showing you before that we started to find the fragments of the Kum Kum base. Oh, wow. Now, if, you know, when you look at the full um, layout, in fact, this is one of our students who was excavating, um, you, know, the, you know, some of the fragments of the, of, of the Kum Kum. Is that Sam? Um, no, well, I can't remember what his name was. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, when, when if, if, if you look at this, you can see that there are several big fragments missing. Right. So what we want to do this summer is to excavate on the other side to look at the stair side outside there. Huh. Hopefully, you know, maybe we find some of the fragments. Right. Frank is also very proud of his work on the Stella, erected for the 40th anniversary of Belizean independence. Mm -hmm. 
Hi, um, my name is Sylvia Bate, former archaeologist at the Institute of Archaeology Niche, now working over at Galen University. Um, and this is the Sila project, the latest Sila here in Belmopan. And so it is a monument to commemorate the 40th anniversary of our independence. And it was constructed um, and inaugurated on the 20th. 20th I believe of September last year and um, it is a community heritage project right here situated in Belmopan so some of the interesting things about it when um, the government of Belize decided that it was going to commemorate the 40th anniversary of our independence and it was going to make it a significant event on the 21st of September, 2021, it occurs again. On this day, it is completed the second Katun. In the land of the Logwood, in the land of Mahogany, the Tukan land. 21 days, 6 months, 9 decades, 6 centuries and 1 millennium are counted back to the 1st of March, AD 331, founding of the Caracol dynasty. 16 days, 11 months, 6 years, Three centuries and one millennium are counted until the 16th of February, 1638, rebellion of 1638 and the founding of the East City. Well, hello, my name is Frank Sip. I am a proud Belizean Yucatec Maya from the beautiful village of Oshmulca, San Antonio in the Coyote District. And so I helped out with the drawing the glyphs and to create the glyphs for the Stella. And now I would love to read the Stella in the, the, the language, the Cholan language in which it was written. So I would love to read that to you. Zik uhabo ushlahun fik mi mi winak hab washak hab ho lahun winal chan lahun kin tu ushlahun hish lascha iksiho ukubo tahin kin tuta cha te winak hab Tiukab kikelte, tiukab kawakte, chak and kab, utaka ho heo, ush winal, ho lahun hab, ho winak hab, chan pik, uti, iuti, balun muluk, huk muan, utaka wak hab, wak winak hab, ush pik, uti, iuti, balun muluk, huk chak si home. Utsaka chan lahun heo wak winal ush hab lahun winak hab uti iuti huk akbal wak lahun suts utsaka ush lahun heo huk winal huk lahun hab ho winak hab iuti chan kip balun kan halau utsaka ho lahun heo chan lahun winali Balun hab Iuti Ush chuen Balun lahun mak Utsaka Balun lahun heo One day we had lunch at a restaurant on the banks of the Mopan at Clarissa Falls. Maya food preparation is a family business now and a part of the family's outreach program. In the place where PBS filmed Frank, they have built a beautiful thatch roof, a place to welcome guests to a Maya meal. Ok, 
Okay. Here we we are preparing some dry cabbages. We eat this with corn tortilla. Oh. Oh, man, uh, corn tortilla. So you're going to make tortillas? Yes. And there is she's preparing some fritters. It's cocoyam fritters. And this is Frank's sister. <laughs> Com como te llama? Como se llama? Nelsi. Nelsi. And these are fritters. The papa or the yes. Macal. Oh yeah. Coco, coco The coco young cook quick. We did it was in our soups. Mm -hmm. Is this the chicken we bought today? Yes. Oh. <laughs> At first we boil the chicken, then we um, we fry just a little bit and then um this is this menu side. We shred it in a small pieces and then we will fry it with onion and lime juice and some pepper. Yum. Yum fritters. Here, Frank's father grinds peanuts to be added into the tomato peanut garnish.
with the same water where we boiled this. It was a really tasty Maya meal. And thanks, Frank, to all of your family. Listo? Tone, Yan Chaton, Hump El, Malob Ora, Ichpak Beton. Am benet ti ek kuchil hanal tene inkaba Salomon sib utata Frank sib atmalo.
that I'll be a saint. I might go down to the river, way that the skies opened up when it touched. She's making me say the way you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. Feel so holy, 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 holy. Oh God, running to the altar like a track star. Wait another minute, cause the way you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, feel so holy. <clears throat> you know that song? Justin Bieber. <laughs> <clears throat> Say, I might go down to the river, but the way that the skies opens up when it touches, she's making me say, the way you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, it feels so holy, 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 oh God, run to the yacht like a track star. I wait another minute, cause the way you hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me feel so holy. ¿Qué dices de mí? Quiero ver qué piensas tú. Me dijiste ayer. Soy cero romántico Aunque no te culpo A veces sé que ni siquiera yo me entiendo Quiero que sigamos saturándonos la vida Te recuerdo Quieres y que me vas a extrañar. No mandes, no me mires a los ojos que me vas a hacer llorar. Yo quiero que esa no sea la última vez que te voy a abrazar. Quisiera que todo fuera mentira y de chingazo despertar. Quisiera que todo fuera mentira y de chingazo despertar. Un día más, una vez más, en tus brazos yo me quiero acurrucar. Un día más. Una vez más, en tus brazos yo me quiero acurrucar. My name is Frank Sib. I am from the beautiful village of Oshmulka, place of the Three Hills, which is now known as San Antonio in the Cayo district. First of all, I want to start by saying a big thank you to Heritage Education Network Belize for hosting this amazing conference where we can share about heritage. And when it comes to heritage, why not share one of the most important heritage, which is the hieroglyphic writing system? I want to talk about how this writing system is coming back to life and how we as a community, Ahti Makwal, are helping to bring it back to life. So in my presentation, I will talk about how we share this knowledge and how our community is responding to this. So I want to start by explaining the name Ah Tzib Masawal. So Tzib means to write or to scribe. And when we add the prefix Ah, it makes it a person. So Ah Tzib is a scribe. And Masawal is the word for the Yucatec Maya culture. So during colonialism, even 
before that, the Mayas would call themselves Masawales, you know, the Masawal culture. And the word Maya came around the time of colonialism. You know, there was a, there is a lot of theories, but the culture itself is called Masawal. So Masawal is the word for the Maya culture. So Ahtzi Masawal is Maya scribe. So in this little community of Ahtzi, I say community because my whole family are a part of all the activities that we do. For example, in the picture here on my screen, this is a beautiful picture taken by my brother Abdon. And throughout my presentation, you will see a lot of pictures which was taken by him. Everything that we practice in our in our community, we rely on the knowledge which was passed on to us by our ancestors or knowledge that have been existing in our culture for a long time. Our slogan has it, crafting with ancient knowledge. Around the 16th century during the Spanish conquest. And we can see a lot of evidence on the Maya writing nowadays on stelas, monuments, as ballport markers, paper books, pottery, cave art, wood carving, and I can go on with a list of evidence about these inscriptions. And as I mentioned, this is something that was erased from our culture. Our people were forced to leave these practices and learn the European letters. So I can say that by the 16th century, there was no Maya who could write in Maya glyphs. But attempts at decipherment started in the 18th and 19th century by some amazing people who I applaud for all their hard work. Because it was until the 1950s, you know, that the system was understood well enough to start decipherment with more certainty. So thanks to all of that hard work of those people, for example, like Tatiana Rosporov, Yuri Kondorosov, Eric Thompson, Linda Sheely, and I can go on the list. Thanks to all of their hard work, we can now say that the system is logosyllabic, where we have logograms and syllables. Logograms are signs representing meanings and sounds of complete words. A good example would be this ka here. If we take a look at the ka, we can see that it is ka as a syllabogram, but it can also be seen as a logogram. This is representing a fish, which is the, the word for kai. It has a little eye, it has its little nose, its little mouth. So by looking at it, we can know that it is a fish. So that is a logogram representing picture words. If we take a look on the side, on the left, we have ka and we have wa at the bottom. These are representation of sounds. So we have logograms and syllab syllabograms. Let's take a look at the catalog. We have the whole consonant and vowels in the Maya system. So we have consonants and vowels. Vowels can stand on their own, so they can be written as, as one. So we have E, E, I, O, U, which are pronounced as the Spanish vowels, A, E, E, O, U. Consonants, they cannot stand on their own, so they need to have a vowel on their side. So consonant plus vowel, consonant plus vowel, so we have ba, be, bi, bo, bu. So we have to know as well, it's good to know that Mayas used to write from left to right, top to bottom, right? This is a good example here, left to right, top to bottom. And there is a lot more we can explain, a lot more that we can learn about the writing system. So as I mentioned, thanks to all of that hard work, you know, we can now say that we can decipher most of the glyphs, but there is more to learn. So thank you for all those hard work to those people. So after acquiring some knowledge in my epigraphy, we decided let's not keep this to ourselves. So we tried to get involved in community outreach, in crash courses, chat with friends, school interviews, and we decided to open up a social media platform where we can share about this information. As part of the community work, I have had interviews with TV channels, schools, whereby students would get very excited and ask a lot of questions about the culture, the writing system, how it works, 
and how to write their names and I will take the chance to share to them the importance of heritage and how we have to be proud and embrace the culture that we are in and how this helps us identify ourselves as a group of people and how just how the writing helps us to understand the life of our ancestors. On the PBS special, I painted a replica of the Comcom base which was found in 2015 at Peking Pond. And by simply doing that, I am sharing to the world. The Mayas are still painting. The Mayas are still writing in hieroglyphs, are still practicing a lot of the traditions, are still speaking the language, you know, and that we are still very willing to share this information to other people, pass it on to our new generation as our ancestors would do. A simple conversation with friends would many times end up in us introducing them to epigraphy, teach them how to write their names in hieroglyphs, and as a sense of motivation for them, we would sometimes carve out little slates with their names, with phrases, or paint them and give it, give it to them as gifts, so that they would have a personal connection to that gift and they can share it to other people and say, I can read this, these are the details in my carvings, you know, and in my drawing. So, oh, we share the knowledge to other people, you know, by friends learning how to write, learning how to read, and have a personal connection to that meaning of the glyph. It is very um, engaging to other people. We decided to open up our social media platforms so that we can reach out to a larger audience. So you can check us out on our website, ahtib.com, on our Facebook page, ahtib Masawal, where we share a glyph of the day. We share a lot of the work that we do, share personalized phrases in hieroglyphs, and also share posts on daily Maya life. Here's a few of the work that we have created. If you take a look at the right bottom corner, you will see a replica of a vase found at Bacon Pond. You can even see the Maya blue here on the rim. Very intricate. So right on top of that, we have a vase commissioned by Olivia Ellis. Here's her name, Olivia Ellis. Ah, pan, tu witsna. Olivia Ellis, an excavator at Tutu Witsna. So in the center, we have a face, and the person buying this said, hey, can we have maybe wisdom incorporated in, in the vase? So I, des I decided to add this guy, which is Itzat. It's a howler monkey, and Itzat means wise. So he represents wisdom on this face, and all the glyphs around are related to wisdom. At the bottom, we have a whole story of a person saying, this is my vase, you know, here is raised my vase, and this is my drinking cup, here is the drinking cup. So it's a whole story that we have here on this vase. And on the left, we have a Maya scribe, an Ahtzib. And here's the glyph for Ahtzib. We have on the... So here we have Ahtzib, Frank, Sib. So scribe Frank Seb as my name here. So these are just some of the work that we do. So we, what, what we um, tell people, you know, give me your phrase in English or in Maya if you can speak Maya. So they give us the phrase and we translate it to Yucatec Maya and then from there transcribe it to Maya hieroglyphs. You know, and in that way, as I mentioned, they, they have a personal affection to phrase and they know what it means and they know how to read it. So this is um, some of the work that we have. One day I got a call from Mr. Lorenzo and he said, Frank, can I have a vase that commemorates the date where Caracol defeated Tikal? And I said, yes, it will be a challenge, but I like it. So I decided to do it, but thinking on that, I said, people are now aware that we can read and write in my hieroglyphs. Especially the older people there, we only saw that you know, on steel as we didn't know we could read it. And that gives them a very strong cultural identity. And they say we have a direct connection or relation to the ancient Mayas that lived on those sites. This is our people. Those were our ancestors. Our ancestors wrote these hieroglyphs, which we can now read and understand. And they're willing now to help in vitalizing this writing system, especially the older people and the younger generation that comes up, you know, learning all of this. So here's this story. If you take a look here, we have Iut, and then it happened. We have the introductory glyph, which introduces the date, which is 562 AD. Kuhul Kantumak, Holy Lord of Karakol. Chak, which is defeated. Yash Ebshok, 
which is the Holy Lord of Tikal. Kuhul Mutul Ahau, Holy Lord of Tikal. Utsip, the writing of, here's my name, Frank Sip. T. Lorenzo Aldana, for Lorenzo Aldana. So this whole story, and we could see like the relation, people are starting to ask for phrases, you know, which were ancient phrases, they would ask for it, and but they would feel just that strong cultural identity, you know, and appreciate and embrace and be proud of what we have when it comes to the writing system. And we are, I am seeing that in people that they are starting to have that very interest in learning and sharing and applying this, you know, to their knowledge. I want to give a shout out to all of those people who are advocates of heritage, who are teaching our young people to be proud of who they are, to be proud of their culture, to be proud of their language, proud of their people and proud of their land. Tulakalong. Yannick Antal, we all play a part in this. Thank you. And thank you kindly, Frank, for who you are and all you do. For a 21 year old in this day and age, you are quite a treasure. And you can contact Frank and have him design your own coffee mug. For a free subscription to the Atslander monthly eased newsletter, contact yours truly, Jim Reed, at Maya Man at BellSouth.net. Thank you all.